Last thing I remember, it was like 6.50 in the morning. Um, the sun was just coming up, and we were going through the, the uh, tunnel. Tunnel. What is it? Virginia. West Virginia. <laughs> West Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. West Virginia. Um, and I remember looking down at the clock. It was 6.50, and the next thing I remember is waking up to the loudest screech screech as we're like driving down the middle median guardrail and like obviously it woke everybody up um and in that moment it seemed like it took forever it was like slow motion but it really happened within seconds, seconds. um we had a complete conversation pretty much um so I overcorrected, and when I did that, we started our flip in the air. And this is like a four-lane highway. So we as we're going 70 miles per hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as as we were flying through the air, I, our vehicle flipped from back to front twice, and then rolled back down a, a hill three times after yeah. that. But in the meantime, as we're flying through the air, I see her um, fly through the passenger side window. And at this moment, um, I'm thinking, like, So I flew out the window, out the passenger side window, and obviously I was flying away from the vehicle. And um, I just remember, it was so fast, but I remember having like a conversation, like a full conversation with God. Like, I cannot die. I have six month old babies. Like all I could think about was my kids at the time being without a mom, but I'd never knew anybody to survive being ejected from a vehicle. So, um, so as I am flying through the air away from the vehicle, I all of a sudden land. But when I landed, it was, I like landed sliding toward the vehicle. So it was like somebody or something grabbed me midair and just gently laid me down. It wasn't like violent at all. It was just like a slide. Did you guys have any like bruises or broken bones? Uh, so I had like three broken toes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I broke my Nothing pelvis. <laughs> um, I broke my pelvis and then I had to walk with a walker for a few months afterwards, but, um, and then we had taken pictures of like bruises and stuff like that that were all over my legs and my body and stuff just to see like the progress of the bruises. I don't know why we did that, but, um, we noticed that on my left knee, there was actually a bruise that was in the shape of four fingers and a thumb. So when I said something grabbed me out of the air, like it was definitely a higher power of some sort. So, so how were your kids? Oh yes. Yeah. So, okay. So how I said I had a bad feeling before we left the the back of the vehicle where Harrison was originally sitting is like completely smashed down. If he were sitting there, he definitely wouldn't have survived. It was crazy because the whole front end was smashed. The back end. And, and that middle section was they were completely intact, intact. like untouched. Yeah. Wow. The hand of God. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So it kind of had different effects on us. Um, For me, it was like, I felt like God was like, I'm not done with you. Like, I need you, you need me type thing. Like, and that really started like a deeper relationship with me, for, with God. And I think for him, it had kind of the opposite effect. Just because I felt so much guilt and and um, like shame, like how could I do this? I, I mean, I almost killed her, and I just started <clears throat> closing down, like shutting off to the fact because I I couldn't even look at her for how long. We didn't even have a conversation for the longest time. Our, we had to move our bed down to our living room, so it was just like a constant reminder to him. And then um, I was walking with a walker, so like he didn't even make eye contact with me for the whole time I was in the walker. I it was just think. a constant reminder of like, 
this is what I did to you. And I mean, she was like, I don't blame you. Like, like over and over, kept on telling me that. But like, I guess I couldn't convince myself mm -hmm. of it. So everything just became cold and, and dark. And it, it was just like a bad time in my life where you would think you would lean on God the most. And it just took me to a dark place. Um, I just stopped, I guess, caring. And just shut myself off to every feeling that I should be able to be there for my wife. But I just didn't have those feelings. So I do remember one of my last journal entries during that time was um, I prayed for Drew to be excited for the baby because he was not happy at all. Mm -hmm. And um, a few days later, he woke me up in the middle of the night and he said, I saw it. I saw the baby. I saw the baby. Do you want to tell your... Yeah. <laughs> so I remember waking up. It's like three in the morning and I'm drenched in sweat. Um, but I get goosebumps talking about it now because like I literally seen our child like just as real as he was sitting here today. Like, So then I get to his left foot and I notice a birthmark there and um, so I wake up and I'm like ecstatic like I just seen our kid and she's like what what coming to and I was like I seen our kid I seen our kid so then that just got me like really excited like man God God showing me like you you have a purpose like to be the best dad and the best husband um, you need to be excited about this. Um, but yeah, so we're in the nursery and uh, cleaning them up and I lift up the name tag and there's a birthmark <laughs> above his left foot that I saw in my dream that God showed me. And I literally, it was probably one of the greatest feelings ever. Like you always know God's real or you think, but until we actually put stuff in your life that like that can only be by him mm. man I, f I uh, fell to, to my knees and just started sobbing like wow amazing 